and welcome to Avoiding Big Brother. Today we'll be taking a look at Cyborg. As usual, this will be a basic malware analysis looking at the reports on the behaviours and capabilities of Cyborg for non-technical viewers. Cyborg is ransomware and it is commonly distributed through email spam campaigns. Attackers are trying to trick the victim into thinking that the email is a critical Windows update. This tactic is quite common for the distribution of malware. It is a social engineering attack. It preys on the emotions and instincts of the victim. The message is based around urgency. If you don't update your Windows system, then you will be vulnerable. Except the download isn't really a security update at all. It is the download for an executable file that launches the ransomware. The executable file is displayed as a JPEG file attached to the email, but opens the .exe file. Spoofing executable files is a common way for a hacker to avoid detection through email security gateways. Many email providers, particularly corporate ones, have advanced scanners that can pick up anything suspicious attached to an email, so spoofing is a method to get around that. What makes Cyborg unusual is that its coding has been held on the popular repository GitHub. This has included the builder and this has allowed anyone to download the builder and create their own cyborg ransomware executable for an attack. The fact that this is easy for anyone to get hold of means that there will be more attacks to come and cyborg files will find their way to online analysis tools like VirusTotal. Let's take a look at a sample file now and study the behaviours and techniques of cyborg. So I'm now on AnyRun, the online malware analysis service. We're going to find a report for Cyborg. So I'll type in Cyborg here. So here is a sample, and if we see in the corner here, it's saying that it's attacking a Windows 7 32-bit machine. Nearly all the samples were doing that. It looks like it's exploiting an older version of Windows. So let's have a look at the attack tactics and techniques. So we've got execution, defense evasion, and discovery. So we've got user execution. That's the victim clicking on the link in the phishing email thinking that it's a, a file for a, a Windows update, but really it's the malicious file. It's the ransom executable. So we've got virtualization sandbox evasion. So here um, it's trying to bypass the security monitoring on the system. It might uh, even detach itself from the system if it is uh, spotted by security, or it may try to stay hidden. So to win the trust of the machine, it's actually using, using root certificates. So this could be a certificate uh, used for a website. It can fool security in thinking it's the, a legitimate source. So it stops warnings popping up like with uh, websites that where you, if it's something suspicious, you might get that warning that pops up that says it's a security risk. So it's using some kind of system certificate there to bypass security. So we've got modifying of the registry like a lot of these malware programs do. So it's connected with query registry. It's looking for system configuration and trying to find out what software is being used, especially security tools. And then it can make the changes to the registry accordingly. So that's linked with system information discovery as well. So software discovery. Again, like I say, it's trying to make changes to security tools, bypass it, but it also could be trying to get escalation of privileges, of, you know, instead of just user permissions, you actually get administration permissions, which can then help with making those changes to the registry. So those are the attack techniques being used by Cyborg. And it looks like it's trying to exploit older machines, uh, older versions of Windows, should I say. So let's have a look at a text report now. And as we can see, it's attacking the Windows 7 Professional. It's got a ransom executable file. So 
So it looks like it's making changes with Internet Explorer, which might be an indication of why this is going after Windows 7, because Internet Explorer is not used on newer versions of Windows. It's certainly not on Microsoft Windows 10, and it won't be on any newer versions of Windows in any future versions that come out. I think they use Microsoft Edge now, so that might be an indication of why this uh, this ransomware is uh, targeting Windows 7. It's making a lot of changes to Internet Explorer executables, and this probably will be linked to those root certificates, trying to get authentication, stop security from posting those warnings to the user. So moving on, this is the static analysis. This is metadata retrieved from the ransom executable. It's using EXIF, which is a tool for retrieving metadata. This can help security analysts identify who the hackers may be or where this uh, malware was developed, the country. Um, a lot of this is stuff that I'm not going to know about. I'm not uh, a cyber investigator, but these are things that they can use when it comes to investigation. So if we scroll down, there's also a summary of that information as well. As you can see here, it says like internal name, original file name. Sometimes that can indicate who the hackers were. It's not always the case because there's also false flags that can be placed in the metadata as well. So here are the screenshots of what happens. So here everything's normal on your Windows operating system. You've got the files for Microsoft Word and the icons. So on to the next. So now those icons for Microsoft Word have changed, sort of blank documents. And we've got the message that uh, you, the files have been encrypted and telling the user that there is a text file that's been dropped onto the machine, which they would then have to open to get the instructions for ransom payment. I think these files may have a, a different extension on them. I can't see on this screenshot, but it has changed those icons. They're not Microsoft Word icons anymore. So the next few screenshots are linked to Internet Explorer. It doesn't actually show that much, but it's, obviously it's making a lot of the changes with that. But here's the ransomware note, the text file. It's telling the user that uh, files are encrypted. It's offering to encrypt the encrypt a file for free. And then after that, it's demanding a Bitcoin payment. And that bit, Bitcoin payment is only $500. Uh, I would think a lot of the hackers using this are probably going to be quite amateurish. This uh, malware is available free on GitHub. Uh, anybody's downloading it, you're going to get a lot of amateurish hackers. You know, you're certainly not going to get ransomware groups demanding millions of pounds worth of Bitcoin. And as usual, you've got an ID for their Bitcoin wallet and communication through ProtonMail, which seems to be the standard for these ransomware attacks. So, like I say, in this behavior graph, you've got the, the executables. When the user gets the email, they click on the file link, and these executables go through. And then it's doing things with Internet Explorer, changing the settings, the own configuration of that. And that's where I think it's bypassing security. It's using those root certificates connected with Internet Explorer. And then obviously you've got lots of changes in the low level part of the system, dynamic link library. Uh, this is at the low level that tells Windows how to use programs and the functionality. And that's where a lot of changes are being made on the registry. Okay, that's a simple overview of Cyborg.